This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today in this video tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to create this interesting symmetrical ink flow design using some assets from the Rody Polis ink flow collection here. Now, I'm actually hosting a contest right now with the folks over at Rody Polis, and we're giving away three ink effects bundles to three winners who can create a very interesting animations using the three asset files that we provided right here in this tutorial. So if you want a chance to win the Ink FX Studio as well as the Ink FX Flow products and win the bundle, go ahead and enter into the contest. The contest ends July 31st, 2015. And all you have to do is create a 10 to 15 second animation using the three files provided in this tutorial here. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you an example of what you can do with the file to create interesting designs so that you don't create the same, uh, you know, the basic uh, ink reveal kind of watercolor effect going on. Um, but let's go take a look at what we're gonna be creating today. And as you can see, it's a very, very interesting design. And we're actually using ink flow elements in this design. So it's a little bit, you know, abnormal, a little bit unique, and it kind of gives you like a new kind of perspective on how to create cool things using things that you wouldn't have expected such as ink flow elements for this kind of uh, graphical sci-fi HUD display kind of graphic here. So this is just one example of what you can do with these ink flow assets to create something interesting. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas for the, for the contest and you'll learn some new techniques in this tutorial as well to apply to your design. So let's go take a look here. Here's the After Effects composition. Um, I will be using a few third-party plugins, but again, you don't have to. I'll be using Magic Bullet Looks for some basic color grading as well as some Red Giant Universe plugins. But again, you don't need third-party plugins in order to follow this tutorial. You can always use my free Dojo Glitch script as well as other color correction built-in tools in After Effects such as curves and the tint and hue and saturation and stuff like that. So let's go and take a look at how to recreate this in After Effects. A lot of this stuff is actually experimental and uh, it takes a while to kind of get the design and stylization effect in. Uh, but in this tutorial, I'll teach you kind of the basics on how to get the symmetrical design here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition. I'm gonna call this tutorial demo. I'm also gonna go ahead and make it uh, 1080p, uh, 23.976 FPS, as well as 10 seconds long and hit okay. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new solid layer. So command and control Y and create a new background, call it BG. We'll make it 1920 by 1080 pixels, hit okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go into the effects generate and create a four color gradient. And this is just to give some variation to the background here. I'm gonna make it kind of like this, this really kind of dark desaturated red. I'll make this the same color around there. Just so we don't have a plain black background, which can be kind of boring at times. And I'll make it kind of like a dark blue and then just in the dark blue, something like that. It's very subtle. I'm not sure if you can tell through uh, YouTube's compression or not, but uh. Just kind of mix it up a little bit so we have some sort of color here. Just kind of mix it in and create some, some variation in color. And then of course we'll increase the jitter to introduce some noise to kind of reduce the bandings and then increase the blend. So it's very, very, very subtle. I'm also working 16 bits per channel to, uh, I guess, remove the banding and get some nicer glows. Hit OK. And now that we have that done, let's go ahead and create a basic grid. So again, new solid, we'll call this grid. This time we'll make it, let's say, 3000 by 3000 pixels. Hit OK. We'll apply an effect. Go to generate and apply a grid effect. I'm gonna go ahead and make hit F4 on the keyboard. Uh, to show the toggles and make sure that the 3D switch is on for the grid. And we'll also go ahead and change the size from, from corner point to width sliders. We'll just increase this a little bit. Something like that. We'll change the borders to about uh, 0.5 for now. And then we'll change the color from white to kind of like this touch of blue. And we'll probably reduce this later, but uh, again, this is looking okay for now. now here we have the ink effects flow elements here. Again, these are free files that you can download on my website at creativedojo.net. These are provided courtesy of Rody Polis for you to try out, have, experiment, and use them in your projects. Um, again, use these files for the contest as well as just for your own projects. This is kind of a, a free sample pack of the high quality 4K 60 FPS uh, ink flow effects by Rody Polis. I'm gonna drag one in here. 
And again, you can download these for free over at Creative Dojo. Um, these are just kind of like ink flow effects. Very, very cool. Use them for visual effects and motion graphics. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag one in and go to effect, go to channel and apply an invert effect. It's going to invert the RGB so we have black over white so that we can use some blending process here. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to effect and go to video copilot and apply the VC color vibrance. Now, before you guys flip crap about using another third party plugin, this is actually a free plugin by video copilot. So you can go ahead and download it for free over at videocopilot.net. The links will be in the description down below. But again, this is a free plugin and it makes it very, very easy to colorize assets like these uh, very quickly and very easily. So right now things are kind of blown out. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the gamma to 0.01. This will kind of give you this kind of grainy look, which kind of looks disgusting. Uh, but you know, this will kind of, uh, but we'll get by with this in a second. We'll also go ahead and change the color from its green color to kind of like this very, very light blue color. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to turn this off. I need to go ahead and map this to kind of a radial design because I kind of want this radiating, uh, I guess, spherical design flow right here. Right now, we just have things flowing down where it's kind of in a linear fashion here. So what we need to do is apply an effect, distort, and apply a polar coordinates effect. Now, this will kind of remap your image to uh, kind of polar coordinates here. So right now, we have a linear or rectangular mapped image. I want to set it to rectangular to polar. And increase the interpolation from zero to 100%. And just like that, we have our assets moving from a center point outwards. So it kind of has like this flowing center point. It's emitting from a single point in kind of like a, a radial fashion here. This is exactly what we want. We can turn on the VC color vibrance effect. So we have something like this. That's looking good. Now, here comes the magic. There's a really cool effect here in After Effects under a stylization or stylize and apply the CC Collider effect here. And this will kind of give you that kaleidoscope effect. So right of the bat, you're not gonna see anything. And that's because we need to offset this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change the center a little bit. And you're gonna see we have this really intricate, very elaborate design here. And honestly, the best way to do this is just to kind of experiment with the design. Um, you know, th all these parameters kind of mess up and distort the kaleidoscope effect. And this is exactly what we want. We want to change the rotation. You can get some very interesting designs this way. Play around with the size to increase the distance between each element here. Play around with the center. You can get some very elaborate effects just by experimenting with some of this stuff here. So we can just play around with that. until so you get something that you like. Uh, and I'm kind of liking this elaborate kind of uh, explosion design here. And as you can see, it animates on from a single point because of the polar coordinates effect. And we have this really, really, really nice design. Of course, you can get more fancy with this and play around with all that stuff. Uh, just like that. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my flow A element. This is a new element here and it's a little bit different. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy all these effects from the previous one and paste it in to the new asset. So right now we're looking at the, the current top layer ink flow, ink flow eight right here. And I just want to go ahead and again, play around with the size, play around with the, the center here to get some interesting effects and play around with the rotation until you get something that looks very organic, kind of interesting here. And then right now, if you want to see both images, we need to kind of blend them together using blending mode. So again, hit F4 until you see the modes here and go ahead and set both of them to screen or add. So now we're starting to see both here and it's looking a lot more interesting. Lastly, I want to bring in the flow eight, put it in the back. I'll also change the blending mode from normal to screen. I'll make sure that all the ink flows are 3D layers because we're going to animate the camera in a bit. And again, copy all the effects and paste it onto the ink flow effect 11. And I'm just going to solo this so we can see what the hell we're working with here. Um, so you're probably not going to see anything. We need to play around with the center. There we go. So just by playing around with the center, you can get some interesting stuff like this. Maybe just offset this a little bit. And the cool thing is we have different modes of mirroring. So right now we're using the flower mirroring mode. Um, you know, and that kind of just explodes and kind of creates a floral, uh, I guess, flourish outwards from the center. 
if we do kind of like an unfold, the animation is a lot more interesting. Kind of wraps open here. We can have maybe like a star starlish here, kind of creates this kind of uh, star-like mirroring system. Die across. You know, we have a lot of different options here. Uh, I'm going to stick with flower for now. So something like this. We will unsell everything and look at the final product. And just like that, we have some very interesting ink designs using ink. And it's very, very cool. So before we continue, I want to go ahead and give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the place to be if you want to create an awesome website for your online business store portfolio. They have awesome themes to choose from, very well crafted, very well designed. You don't have to have any coding knowledge required because everything is drag and drop, live editor, very powerful to customize the theme to your likings and create the website that you want for your website. Best of all, they have 24 hour support and starting at just $80 a month, you can get up and running with your website right now with a free trial, no credit card required. Now, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order as well as support the dojo as well. So check it out, squarespace.com, the number one place to create an awesome website, Squarespace. Now for the rest of the tour, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on a little bit of the stylization effect. We're not gonna get it exactly the way it was before, but I'm gonna give you a few tips and pointers. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. We'll call this glow. And we will apply an effect, stylize glow. In the original example, I use a few uh, Red Giant Universes glow, but in this case, I'll use the default one just to keep things pretty basic and mess around with this. The huge problem here is blowing things out. We don't want to blow any of the highlights out, and it's kind of hard to do in this case, but you know, it should work just fine. We'll duplicate the glow, increase the radius a little bit, so it's kind of like the overall glow maybe decrease the intensity, something like that, looking pretty good. Um, you know, so we have something like this. Let's go ahead and animate the camera here. So I'm gonna create a new camera, call this camera. We'll turn off depth of field for now. You can always turn that back on once you're ready. It's kind of a render hit for me right now. Uh, we'll hit P on the keyboard, actually we'll hit R on the keyboard and uh, go to the orientation. We'll set it to maybe like 35. So we're gonna uh, kind of start rotating right here. We'll move around eight seconds long and we'll change it to zero degrees. We'll easy ease it, hit uh, animation, uh, keyframe assistant here and go to easy ease or F9. So it just kind of rotates like that. And then we'll do a basic camera zoom out or pan out here. So we'll start at the beginning. We'll kind of start zoomed in a little bit and then we'll hit you on the keyboard to show all the keyframes and we'll go all the way to the end and uh, we'll just zoom out so we see everything just like this. So it kind of just pans out and rotates out and you get uh, you know, a very basic camera animation here. So looking pretty good. We will go ahead and work on a little bit more stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a color grade layer. This is a free script from Creative Dojo again called the Dojo Toolkit script. It just automates some of the tools I use um, I just created an adjustment layer with uh, Metropole Looks, which again, is a third party plugin. But of course you can use curves and tint and hue and saturation and stuff like that. I'm gonna hop into the Metropole Looks. And I love using Looks for motion graphic because it kind of gives me kind of like a uh, many variations to see what coloring I wanna go with right now. So there are a lot of options that we can go with. Uh, I'm gonna go for kind of that blue, but desaturated steel look. Again, these kind of give you ideas on what to do if you're kind of lacking some inspiration here. So I'm kind of liking the this one right here, but I do want to go ahead and tweak the contrast down to uh, something very low, and maybe decrease the diffusion a little bit, something like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tweak everything with the curves here. So I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit these shadows are a little bit too dark. And pull it down like that. I also want to go ahead and maybe pull the blues up for the shadows a little bit. And then go to the green, maybe pull that up so it's not too blue. We kind of have this going on. And then for the reds, we will 
increase it in the shadows. I mean, in the highlights a little bit and decrease it in the shadows a little bit. Then we we'll go ahead and tint this thing about 30%. So it's not too colorful, uh, very desaturated, kind of a steel look. I think we have too much contrast in here. Let me just go ahead and just tweak this a little bit. Maybe something like that. Um, maybe we can just decrease the shadows just a little bit. And decrease the green a little bit. And then we'll go down to the second curves here. We want to just kind of cap the highlights a little bit. We don't want it to be low now. So we'll just kind of cap the highlights a little bit. This is the best we can do for now, I think. Maybe just go into the RGB and maybe bring the shadows up a little bit. We'll go to the green. We'll pull that up. Go to the blue. We'll pull that up. And then for the reds, again, we'll increase the reds in the highlights and then decrease it in the shadows. Something like that. And again, we will maybe decrease the tint to 50%. So it's very, very desaturated. Um, but we get this really, really nice design. Another thing I did was create a kind of a distortion, a lens distortion effect. So we'll go to adjustment layer and we will call this chromatic aberration. And I use Red Giant Universe's uh, Lens Distortion plugin here. But again, you can always use my free Dojo Glitch script, which does kind of the same thing here. So I'm gonna apply a chromatic aberration. This will give you a focused lens look. I'll change the red scale from 1.01 to 1.001, 1.01, and then change the, uh, let's see here, blue scale to 0.999, so it's a little bit smaller. Uh, red, red distortion to maybe around two, green to around three, and maybe blue to around four. So it's a little bit more subtle. Lens texture, we'll change it to maybe smudges, and maybe, you know, 10% if even for the lens texture. And we'll increase the edge radius here. Something like that so it's more diffused. I'm gonna create one more adjustment layer. I'm gonna call this CC. And I think we need to brighten this up just a little bit. We'll apply a curves effect. We'll just pump this up. We'll just bring this down a little bit. And then I'm gonna go to effect. I'm going to go to stylize and apply one more glow. This is gonna be an overall glow. Decrease the intensity, increase the threshold a little bit. I kinda of just want this kind of diffuse glow. Just really crank it up. Something like this. So if you kind of just scrub through it, we kind of have this really nice, elaborate animation. Going back to the chromatic aberration, I want to go ahead and increase the lens distortion. I kind of forgot to do that. Kind of gives it this more warped look in the original example. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and create uh, maybe a grain layer to even out uh, some of the banding and you know, kind of give it this organic grain effect. Maybe a letterbox, something like that. Also in the original demonstration here, I use an effect called Holo Matrix, which again is a universe paid script or paid plugin. Uh, but again, you can use uh, Venetian blinds within After Effects to kind of create that the, the horizontal streak lines here, uh, digital scan lines. But again, just like that, you kind of create this very interesting uh, kind of organic flowing ink effect using After Effects and kind of touch how to stylize it in a very interesting way. Let me just do a quick RAM preview. So as you guys can see, you get this really, really nice, interesting kind of flowing organic reveal using ink flow effects by Rody Polis. It's a very interesting and abstract design. And you guys know how much I love abstract designs. It's very, very cool and it's very easy to do. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. Um, of course, it's kind of blown out a little bit. You can also animate this, animate the uh, kaleidoscope parameters more and kind of uh, play around with the glow so you don't kind of uh, uh, blow out the highlights here. This is just gonna give you a general idea on how to create this effect using uh, Rody Pulse's Ink Flow FX assets here. Again, these are free assets to download. Free to download over at creativedojo.net. Check them out and check out Rody Pulse as well. They create some really great stock footage assets and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you create something cool, let me know it in the comments down below. But once again, guys, my name is Vincent Nguyen from the Creative Dojo. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.